So again, we're recording this on late Monday afternoon. So word, official word may be in, may not be in about the fate of Riley Reef. But again, since this is our simulation, and even though we live on the stupidest timeline, I want to live in a simulation where Riley Reef is gone, right? So the Vikings cutting Riley Reef. Presumptive plan is to shift Brian O'Neill to left tackle as well as elevate uh, second-year former six-round pick Olisimaka Udo to right tackle. Let's go. Let's go. Now, I had been a little bit chill on Udo this year because I thought that he was potentially behind the eight ball, uh, no OTAs and whatnot, as well as he missed the first uh, couple weeks of training camp uh, because he had extended stay on COVID reserve. But he's been crushing it as second team uh, right tackle. They obviously see him as a big uh, part of the future, as well as uh, if the Vikings were truly committed to getting the best five offensive linemen on the field, Udo was one of them. So e- even though you're taking drastic measures of messing with a good thing, Brian O'Neill at right tackle, shifting him over him to left tackle, uh, because Udo is a right tackle through and through, let's get it. Let's get it done. So background on Oli. Uh, 6'5", 336, uh, 23 years young, uh, started 45 games for Elan, all at right tackle. Uh, as a first-team FCS All-American, his final season 2018. Uh, insider note, so Adam Zimmer coached against him in the Shrine Bowl. So he's like, hey, you know that, that massive dude from a small school? He's going to be really good. Rick, go pick him up. Combine, uh, just monster numbers at a really nice 40, 95, uh, 95th percentile for wingspan. So long arms, he's huge. He's got man size strength, already was uh, ready for the NFL game. As well as, uh, I think that his uh, footwork was really underrated. Uh, Vikings took a sixth-round flyer on him, uh, paired him up with fourth-rounder Drew Samia. Everyone and their mom had a lot more hype for for Samia, except I, I've talked about this offseason. My love for Oli Udo. I uh, look great in camp as a rookie. I uh, was a preseason stud. I recorded a 74.6 PFF grade in pass blocking, as well as only allowed two pressures on 53 snaps and zero sacks at right tackles. So they're like, hmm intriguing and then was basically redshirted all season week 17 the uh, free skate against the bears he performed extremely well uh, on 31 snaps even had a nice little pancake of Khalil Mack that we've talked about uh, extensively just showed that raw athleticism uh, that raw uh, strength and he had more bounce in his feet it was more comfortable in pass sets than uh, uh, frankly a lot of us gave him credit for and also he looked 10 times better than uh, Samia uh, on film week 17 I mean no one talks about that uh, enough but uh, he, he he came into camp, he solidified himself, uh, and the Vikings do seem ready to rock and roll with him. So uh, I think it's a great move. And, and le- like we said, with the Vikings, we're dedicated to getting the best five offensive linemen on the field. Ole Udo is going to be one of those guys. But the problem is I, I didn't see Ole necessarily uh, kicking out to left tackle. Potentially, he, he would have been fine as a guard. Uh, but uh, I think that the Vikings, they understand that Brian O'Neill has experience at left tackle. Ole Udo's only played right tackle, only played right tackle, only played right tackle. So if you have a problem of two good right tackles, move the one over that has had experience at left tackle before, as did have uh, great success at left tackle before. He was a first team all ACC. Uh, Brian O'Neill was final season at Pitt. So I, I can't wait to see Ol- Olisimaka Udo uh, destroy things at that right tackle spot, as well as. So we heavily criticized the Vikings dicking around with Ezra Cleveland, the second round pick out of Boise State, uh, experimenting with him at guard, where there are some issues with him at guard. Does he play with enough leverage? Can he do this? Can he do that? Now, obviously, he can add size and strength. But if the Vikings plan all along was to part ways with Riley Reef in a salary cap move, as well as move Brian O'Neill to left tackle, move, move Ole Udo to right tackle, which... I, I don't if you told me that that was a long term plan, I don't believe it since the first snaps that Udo got a right tackle, first team right tackle, and Brian O'Neill got a first team left tackle was Sunday. So I don't believe it. But if the overall overarching plan was have O'Neill and uh, Ole Udo at your tackles, then it does make a little bit more sense uh, that Ezra Cleveland would be working at guard since if both of those 10 pole spots are taken, trying to work Ezra Cleveland in. Uh, uh, the, the you know Dennison and Kubiak obviously thought that maybe working Ezra in as a guard uh, as opposed to Udo in as a guard made a little bit more sense uh, given Ezra's athleticism. So we'll we'll see. Like I, I'm frankly I'm pretty excited. I was ready to move on from the Riley Reef uh, era for the Vikings. I think Brian O'Neill will crush it at left tackle, but also that ratcheted up his price price tag like. Five more million per year, but I don't care at this point. Just having a good offensive line, having some good tackles, as well as um, Ole Uda out there, rogue rating dudes like Prime Phil Lodeholt. Bring that on. 
bring that ish on. Let's go. Woo! All right, so your thoughts. Uh, Ole Udo, starting right tackle for the Minnesota Fighting Vikings. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support that work? Pull us on the Venmo. But until next time, skull. Skull.